I'm really looking forward to this Sunday. It's going to be something we have never done at our church. As many of you know, this past Monday, our governor uh, issued some new state guidelines, and one of those was to close every single church in the state of California until further notice. The allowance we have is that we can hold church as long as it's outside and in a safer environment. We are blessed with three buildings and tucked between the buildings, we have a very nice patio. And so we're going to have a patio service until further notice. I've told people it's going to be really casual. Uh, I'm gonna do something I've never done before. Uh, people have always said, why don't you relax, wear a pair of shorts when you preach? Well, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna preach in shorts. And in many ways, this will feel like an all church picnic without the fried chicken. Now, having said that, many of you from our church know that uh, we share our parking lot with a restaurant, a barbecue restaurant that's just opening. Uh, the Smokin' Bird is their title. And I met with Daniel, who is the owner of it, and, he, and we had a little talk, and I said, how about not this Sunday, but next Sunday, we all come down and we have a picnic at your restaurant because they have a large open area that will accommodate, I think, all of our people. So for our people, I'll tell you more about it next week, but it's really going to feel like a church picnic because we're going to have a brunch right after the service a week from this Sunday. So much for that. Some people have said, you know, the governor just keeps sending us lemons. Everything is a bad news that we get from our governor. We're out here in California. And uh, we determined that we will make lemonade out of the lemons and we will enjoy this time. We will worship and sing our hearts out, out in our great outdoors. Now, having said that, let me just caution you on one other thing. Because of what is going on in our society today with the COVID, uh, the search for a vaccine, uh, the closures, and all that's going on, I feel compelled to interrupt my series on spiritual gifts. And I know some of you were just waiting to hear whether or not you have the spiritual gift of giving. Well, you're going to have to hold on one more week uh, because there are some other things that I need to address. And it deals with vaccines. It deals with the Antichrist. It deals with the tribulation. It deals with some comfort that I need to give some people that have been sending me messages that are nearly in a state of panic over what's going on. And a lot of it is over the vaccination that they undoubtedly will be asked or required to get, I would say, within the next six months. So I've got some concerns. So I've gotten questions. Uh, what about the COVID-19 vaccination? Is there going to be a tracking device? Will we have to be able to show that we have had it in order to buy and sell? Right now, you can't go into a grocery store without a mask. Uh, it's a mask today. Will it be a vaccination tomorrow? And then people have taken that further and said, there are some things about the vaccination that scare the daylights out of me. And they've talked about the mark of the beast the 666. The beast is the coming Antichrist that the Bible talks about, who will have world dominion, he will be evil, and he will rule and terrorize during a seven-year period called the tribulation. And one of the things that are that's talked about in the book of Revelation is his requirement that people have the mark of the beast on their right hand or their forehead in order to buy or sell. And people are saying, yikes, this sounds really scary. And, and why are so many people so alarmed? Let, let me just do this. And by the way, I am not saying this in the sense that I'm alarmed. What I want to do is I want to take all of you that are looking at this, hearing this, and you will hear more, hear more about it as we get closer to the vaccination time. I want you to know what the Bible says about it. Doesn't that sound fair? That's where the Bible, the Bible is the one that talks about the mark of the beast. And I want to put it in context so that maybe I can take a little of the fear off because God didn't appoint us to a spirit of fear. Uh, he gave us a sense of boldness. And we don't always understand anything, but Pro uh, the Proverbs says, trust the Lord in all your ways, follow him. 
and lean not on your own understanding. So I'm just going to encourage you, lean on God's understanding. He's got it figured out. And so let me set the table for this. All right, the mark of the beast. Uh, in Revelation 13, it's called the number 666. It says this is the mark, the number of a man, and it refers to the Antichrist, and people will be required to get this starting in the middle of the tribulation in order to do business. And people looked at the coronavirus. Now, all my life I've watched people play the numbers game where they ascribe to certain letters, like for Hitler's name, certain numbers, and they come up with 666. They did it with Nero also. And, and so they're doing it with Corona. And here's how it goes. I'm just going to give you a real rudimentary introduction to these things. If you looked at the letter A, that would be a 1, B would be a 2, C would be a 3, all the way through to 26 for Z. So if you go Corona, you get a C, that's 3, an O, 15, R, 18, another O, another 15, an N, which would be letter number 14, A would be letter number 1. You add them all up and what do you get? 666? No, you get 66. And so they said, well, let's add up how many letters are in Corona. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, so there's the other six. You got six letters and then 66 numbers. So, it's, so this thing, this, this disease could be something related to the mark of the beast. Now, there is something called cryptocurrency system that is a way of vaccinating and implanting certain markers and trackers. Uh, I've watched the videos on how they do this. I believe the technology is there. Will this be used for the vaccination? I doubt it, but it could be. The technology is there. And they say when you go and you look at that, it's called COVID, which stands for, I've heard it said, Certificate of Vaccination, although I, I believe it stands for the COVID or the uh, coronavirus. And then the ID would be to identify, and the 19, they put numbers and letters together. They said the first letter, or number, number one, would be an A, number nine would be an I. That stands for artificial intelligence. And, and they said, and then if you look at the patent number, and, and I've seen this, I'll give you the patent number, 02020060606. And as I've heard it said, a zero is nothing, so it ends in 666. You, you know, that is a little offsetting, isn't it? And you look at it and you say, could this be a possibility? Should you be alarmed? And if this vaccination looks like this, should you take it? Because the Bible that says at the end, don't take it. For those that take the, tat or take the mark of the beast will be damned for all eternity. Wow, those are high stakes. So we're going to look at that. I, I received something else from a friend of mine, and they talked about uh, it's just a mask. It's just like right now. And this just shows you some of what people are thinking. And so let me read it. Uh, quote, you thought a mask was inconvenient? Wait until you're told that you cannot enter a store without proof of the COVID-19 vaccine. See, right now I can't go into a store without a mask. Uh, wait until you go into, you can't go into a public event or travel without proof of having received this vaccine. It's just a mask can turn into, it's just a vaccine very quickly. And it will, you can bet your bottom dollar on that. All right, is it just a mask? Is it just a mark? Let me share what the Bible says. Okay, so you get the picture. People are alarmed. And as the time of the vaccinations come, there will be more alarm. So I would like to give you a little word of comfort and understanding. I don't have all the answers, but I know what the Bible says, and I'll try to relate that. What does the Bible say? The mark of the beast is mentioned in two places, and only two, in Scripture. Both of those are in the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and chapter 20. The first one is chapter 13, verses 16 through 17. And it happens, here. now you got to catch this. The mark of the beast is introduced in the middle of the tribulation. What is the tribulation? Many of you know, others are, this is new to you. It's a seven-year period that God said he would trouble this world, 
there would be great uprisings. He would use it to restore spiritually the Jewish people, and he would judge sin. And during that seven-year period, in the middle of it, three, three and a half years in, the mark of the beast is introduced. So let me read it, verse 16. The false prophet. Now, there are two beasts mentioned. The beast is the Antichrist, but he has a colleague called the false prophet. He is the leader of the world religious system. There is a one world church. Uh, the churches as we know them now, uh, they're, they're gone during this period. Uh, and, and I believe the saints from the church age are gone also. But during that period, this colleague of the Antichrist, called the false prophet, says, forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. And that's why people look at names of these guys and, and try to put numerical values to it. And by the way, I'm not criticizing them for it. Uh, it's just that every time they've done that, it has been proven that he's not the one. Uh, verse 18, this calls for wisdom. Let the person that has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That number is 666. Here's the second place. This takes place after the tribulation is done, just coming to a conclusion. And it involves a group of people, multitudes of them, that became believers during the tribulation. You say, well, how can that happen? Well, the Bible talks about multitudes from every tribe and nation that during this period of, of great persecution and satanic rule on this earth, multitudes will come to Christ for salvation. And they will reject the Antichrist. And for that, they will be martyred. And now we're in heaven in chapter 20, verse 4. And it says, I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast nor his image and had not, listen to this, had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and will reign with Christ a thousand years into the millennium. Wow. So they were martyred during the tribulation. All right, so the current situation, when I look at it, really feels a little bit like what the world will be like during the tribulation. There will be authoritarian rule, and somebody will get away with a whole bunch of stuff. And I think one of the things I've learned is that in the last five months, how quickly... That can happen. Five months ago, who would have thought every church in America is closed? Who would have thought that? Uh, another uh, thing I, got, I picked up off the internet from a friend of mine, just summarizing this. I'll give you her views uh, and read them as she wrote them. She said, in less than five months, our government has dictated what events are acceptable versus unacceptable to attend. Riots are okay. Family funerals are not. Standing in a graduation line is a safety hazard, but feel free to line up at Walmart, Lowe's, and the Home Depot. In less than five months, our government successfully facilitated the closing of family-owned businesses while granting authority to large corporations that they had invested interest in. Uh, there's a little bias here. You can see that coming out. In less than five months, our government was able to successfully sway the population into believing that a cashless society is a good thing in the name of a government-sponsored virus. Let me just pause there. Uh, I've been in three situations recently on the golf course, and fortunately in California, the golf courses are still open. However, you can't pay cash, and I remember this foursome coming in at a, a fairly expensive course and they wanted to play, they had a reservation, they had everything, and they had tons of cash. Uh, but, but nobody had a credit card, and they couldn't play. 
and I've been there with other guys that have had to borrow money from me because they didn't have a credit card with them. And so we see this. We hear about the, the coin shortage. I don't even know about that. But you see that. In less than five months, going on in my reading, in less than five months, our government closed down public schools. L.A. and San Diego are closed until further notice. They're not opening on site this fall. And they have restructured school moving forward under the guise of public safety from a virus. Uh, and it, it, what, which, which doesn't mention is they've also closed the churches in California. Uh, so this morning I was looking at something by Andy Stanley, and he's announced that his church in the Atlanta area, which one of the largest in the nation with 30,000 people in attendance on seven different campuses, they're closed for all of 2020. And so effectively, you've seen this hit churches. This has been especially difficult for the mega churches because of the guidelines that are established. Well, let me continue to read. You thought a mask was inconvenient? Wait until you're told you cannot enter a grocery store without proof of the COVID-19 vaccine. Wait until you can't go to public events or travel without proof. To everyone that doesn't believe this is possible, do you understand that our government just successfully dictated to the people of America when they were allowed to go outside, when they were allowed to go, where they were allowed to go, how their children would be educated? All of this in less than five months, and the majority of the population has followed blindly what they were told to do. So, is this a precursor of the Antichrist? Are we close to the tribulation? Well, I believe we're close to the tribulation. I, I do. And, and yet, when I look at uh, how we need to be careful about identifying people as the Antichrist, this one's a little difficult because people are basically saying the vaccine is, or somebody behind it, and Bill Gates' name gets thrown out there, and other people. We have to be really, really careful. Uh, in 176 BC, uh, in Israel, Antiochus Epiphanes uh, was just out to destroy everything that was sacred to the Jews. He was ruling there with the Greeks, and everybody thought he was the Antichrist. And, and then when Nero came in the first century of Roman rule, the Christians, they, they were under, he blamed them for the fire that destroyed Rome. And that's why they were burying out in the catacombs after that. And the persecution for another 200 years in Rome until Constantine was just intense. Many people believed we were already in the tribulation. And then when Constantine came along, they thought, well, maybe we're in the millennium now. Well, if this is the millennium, then God is overpromised and underdelivered. When we get to the millennium, the kingdom of God, it will be glorious, nothing like we have now. And then you, so Nero was accused of being the Antichrist. People came up with 666 using Latin, English, and Hebrew on that one. Then there was Hitler uh, in the 30s and 40s. You know his story. Many were convinced he was the Antichrist, especially with his uh, devilish hatred of the Jewish people. Now, you need to know that in Satan's plans, we talk about the wiles or the schemes of the devil, the Bible does, Hitler may have been the guy that Satan was planning on using. And, and I believe throughout history, Satan always has somebody in the wings ready to step in. And then God says, no, it's not time. And uh, that one was stopped. Now, in my lifetime, I had one guy that I would argue with over just about everything. Uh, and he, he was bound and determined Henry Kissinger was the Antichrist. And he's not the only one. I don't know why everybody picks on poor Henry. And they come up with 666 out of his name. And uh, I, I think he's still alive, too, but he must be in his late 90s. He needs to hurry if he's going to get this thing going. But this guy also had come up with the date of the rapture uh, multiple times, even though God said you won't know the time or the day. Uh, and he's been wrong like five times, and I keep pointing that out to him. Uh, we have others that people have said, Mikhail Gorbachev because of the birthmark on his head. John Kennedy, because of the head wound that he sustained, because it says the Antichrist will survive from a mortal wound. And so people have tried to do that. Uh, I believe there are multiple, the Bible says there will be many Antichrists. There will be a spirit of Antichrist through the ages. And yet we aren't to the official 
capital A, Antichrist. Uh, for example, here's how they did Hitler. You want to know, the, just, I'm going to do the numbers on one person, okay? Hitler. Uh, the letter H is the seventh letter in the alphabet, okay? I don't have a chart up here, so it'll be a little harder. I is the next letter, which is the eighth letter. And then the T is the 19th, the L is the 11th, the E is number four, and the R is number 17. And you say, what does that add up to? 66. But what they do is they add 100 to each one of those. So it's 107, 108, 119, and with six letters, that comes out to be 666. And, and I do believe Hitler manifested all of the characteristics of the coming Antichrist. So here are seven things the Bible teaches us about the mark of the beast, okay? This is really where I wanted to go. So as you're talking with people and you're, they're absolutely convincing you that this is the mark of the beast, if you get the vaccine, you're going to hell. If you don't get it, you're going to starve to death, you know? And so if you're worried about that choice, just bear this in mind. Number one, the mark of the beast will not be introduced until the middle of the seven years of tribulation. We just read it in Revelation 13. And here are the things that have to take place before then. Uh, I was talking with Kevin, who does our filming just, uh, just before this, and he was saying, you know, that he's waiting for them to rebuild the temple. And, and he's right. The temple has to be rebuilt. Uh, before Revelation 13 takes place, there's the great battle called Gog and Magog in Ezekiel 38 that sets up the tribulation. And then there is the rise of this world leader called the Antichrist. And then there is this seven years of tribulation that we think we've gone through tribulation. We haven't seen anything. We will know when it's tribulation with a capital T. There will also be the U.S. will be out of the picture and this Antichrist will promise peace to Israel. He will allow them to rebuild the temple. The temple will be rebuilt. He will be their best buddy. And meanwhile, there'll be 144,000 Jewish evangelists winning people to Christ. And by the way, it says they will have God's seal on their forehead. Satan is such a cheap imitator, so he's going to put this thing on the, the people's heads that follow him. But these, the, the 144,000 Jewish evangelists, and then there are the two witnesses and their ministry in Jerusalem. And then the chapter before, Satan is tossed out of heaven. He and his forces, the fallen angels, the demons, lose to Michael and the forces of heaven. And Satan knows his time is, is, is imminent. He knows he doesn't have much time. He betrays Israel. He, get, he, he has his false prophet starting to do works. And then we have the abomination of desolation. Now, the abomination of desolation, I see it in chapter 13 where it's of Revelation, verse 5. The beast was given a mouth to utter words and blasphemies, that's the Antichrist, and to exercise its authority for 42 months. In other words, you're halfway through, you got three and a half years, he is going to go after God's people like he's never done it before. And he opened his mouth to blaspheme God and to slander God's name and his dwelling place, the temple, and those who live in heaven. The beast was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe, people, nation, and league, or language. And all inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life, the Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. And after that, the false prophet institutes the mark of the beast. The second reason I, I believe we need not worry what will happen prior is that Christians will be raptured to heaven prior to the tribulation. You say, now, wait, wait, you say, Rick, you just said there would be multitudes of Christians. Yeah, these will be people that get saved during the tribulation. I believe from uh, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Corinthians, and elsewhere that we have the expectation that we will not suffer this wrath that we would, this is time of Jacob's sorrow, that we will be raised with the dead. The dead in Christ will rise first. Christ will call us to heaven. Uh, why do I believe that? Well, you know, we see the believers in heaven all the time. We see that in the tribulation. We know that the saints from this church age will return with Christ. Now, the poor people in, in Thessalonica, 
they're going through persecution. And here's, here's the problem. They believed, they believed in the rapture. They believed that Christ would return for them. But they thought it would be in their lifetime. They thought it was imminent. They thought that he was going to come back. He rose to heaven, and he was going to come back and get them all. Well, as time went by, two things happened. Some of their people started dying. Uh, from old age, er, various other things. And persecution started getting intense. And so what, they're starting to second guess this. Was our eschatology wrong? Uh, did we miss the rapture? Will those that die, if Christ returns now, will he leave them behind on earth? Uh, or did we get it wrong? In the are, are we in the tribulation and did we miss the rapture? And so 1 Thessalonians is a correction by Paul saying, no, the dead in Christ will rise first. And then those of us who are alive when Christ returns will join them in the air and be taken to heaven. And then we see them in heaven during the tribulation and that when we return with Christ at the end of it. All right, we are not appointed to wrath, the Bible says, and, and so on. But, so Paul tried to correct that misunderstanding. Here's a third thing. People will not mistakenly accept the mark of the beast out of ignorance. You know, it's not like, like one of these things like, man, I didn't know that's what it was. When I read in chapter 13, it is very clear that the people know exactly that they are signing up for this. And they know that this is the mark of this demonic, devilish leader. And so it's not one of these things where if you get a vaccination and, and then you say, well, what if perchance that is the mark of the beast? Uh, I don't read that in scripture. I don't. Number four, uh, vaccinations are not normally given to the right hand or the forehead. Okay. Now, if they insist that this is going to be done on the right hand and they use some type of funky implant, uh, I may have to readjust this. I'll be back on the air. But typically, it's not that way. Uh, number five, the believers are told to flee prior to this. Here, here's how it goes. When Jesus was speaking to the people, he said, you need to look for two signs after I'm gone, okay? During the tribulation, the people are instructed, and some of you are not believers, and you're going to not go up in the rapture, and the tribulation would come, and you're going to remember these words I'm telling you. Jesus in Matthew said, watch for two signs as Christians. Number one, the abomination of desolation. When you see the Antichrist in the restored temple proclaiming he is God or the Son of God who recovered from a mortal wound, which I think is what he's going to say. He is going to claim to be Jesus and he wants to be worshipped. He's always wanted to be worshipped. He is so jealous of Jesus. That's what got him out of heaven in the first place. And when you see that, the believers and the Jewish believers also are told to flee and hide. When you see that, and that's just before the mark of the beast. Okay? Oh, by the way, there's a second sign. Jesus said, and when you see me return, lift up your heads, redemption draweth nigh. So you're in hiding. When you see me approaching from the east and you hear of my return, stand up. It's all over. Uh, you, you can come out of hiding. Uh, here's a, a sixth reason uh, I believe that uh, we need not be too concerned right now. 666 is not the number uh, referring to a, a patent or a disease vaccination. Clearly, it says in verse 13, or chapter 13, it is the number of a man, and he has all of man's characteristics. He is a world leader. He is a leader of a group of people. He is a man. It's not a world system. It's not a vaccination. Another, another thing, seventh thing uh, that the Bible teaches us. It will be instituted by a religious leader of the world. Uh, and we can read all of chapter, I'm going to read some of this. I may go a little long, but you need to hear this. Chapter 13, verse 11. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. All right, this, here's the false prophet. It had two horns like a lamb, but spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf, and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast 
whose fatal wound had been healed. And it performed great and miraculous signs. I believe he really will be doing this. I think Satan will be empowering him. Even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of men. Because of the signs it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. It ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by sword and yet lived. And the second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast, so that the image could speak and call us all who refused to worship the image to be killed. That's why he had all those martyrs up in heaven. It also forced everyone, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive the mark on their right hands or on their foreheads. His key role would be to cause worship. All right, so those are the things the Bible teaches about it. Uh, as I said previously, a lot of people have tried to guess who the Antichrist is. And I've heard all of the different opportunities on this. And, and my belief is that Satan, yeah, I, I think, always has had a candidate in waiting. And when I look at some of the individuals, especially Adolf Hitler, uh, because of his supernatural, devilish hatred and slaughter of the Jews, uh, because they are God's chosen people. And in the tribulation, he knows, he, he can read. And he knows that Jesus will restore the Jewish people spiritually. They will be in the land. They will be his people again. And so Satan tried to wipe, to wipe it out. I think empowering Hitler to do it. Uh, well, five things, as I wrap this up, try to wrap this up. Five things I've learned from the COVID-19 crisis. Number one, I believe we have all the technology in place for somebody to do a mark like this. I think we could do it to America. I think we could do it to the world. I think somebody with evil intent could make this happen with the technology we now have, where something is implanted in people without which they cannot do business anywhere. And it probably would tell us where they are. Uh, secondly, it has shown me that change could happen in a heartbeat. Our nation is not the same nation it was five months ago. I mean, we have watched in horror at what has happened to our nation. Number three, we may be going through a test or a preview of things to come. Uh, this is almost like Satan trying this out a little bit. Number four, the answers are in the Bible. And if there's a question as to whether or not this is the case, we go to the Bible. Even though there's only a few verses that deal with it, God doesn't have to repeat himself much. It's in the Bible. And then number five, I believe that uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, rulers of darkness in high places. I believe Satan is behind the evil that is occurring in our country right now. Uh, I'm going to close by reading uh, something that a good friend of mine, Dr. Rex Rogers, a great thinker and a great leader, uh, he just posted it yesterday. And uh, he articulates much of what I've seen. And, and let me just read his nine. He gave 10. I'm going to give you nine of the outrages. He says, since outrage is the new American pastime, I thought I'd get into the act and list a few of my personal outrages. And when I looked at this, I see what's going on in America that, is, that has marks of being evil. Uh, first, is abortion on demand and the women's health offered by Planned Parenthood. Bravo to Rex for coming out and saying that. Margaret Sanger was the one that founded Planned Parenthood. Her goal was to limit the number of black babies being born, to control the black population. And effectively, they are continuing to do that. 40% of the abortions performed our little black babies were aborted by their mothers. And he's outraged over that as I continue. We talk about the death toll from the COVID virus. Meanwhile, 4,000 babies a day are being killed through abortion. Number two, one of his outrages, the suppression of free speech and the First Amendment in the name of tolerance. We are seeing more and more you know, is our freedom of speech in the church when we're being told you can't sing? I understand the health issues. I do. But I believe there is 
license being given to suppress that will be used for something more evil in the future. Number three, senseless rioting destroying neighborhoods as political leaders go AWOL. You know, where are the leaders of these communities? Number four, vandalizing America's founding, America's ideals, leaders, names, places in a cancel culture purge. Number five, the surrender of public universities as bastions of free inquiry to political correctness, totalitarianism, and safe zones. Number six, the adoption in our public schools of the bogus 1619 project as a substitute for real accurate and accurate American and act, accurate and actual American history. Here's number seven, it's a longer one. Feckless kowtowing, the, these are <laughs> Rex's words, I love it, he writes well. Feckless kowtowing to politicians, of politicians, to the new religion of the left, which is not classical liberalism, the new religion of the left that brooks no disagreements, demands absolute fidelity to its woke doctrines, offers no forgiveness or grace, only shaming for those who question, and postures eternal victimhood and presents itself as the savior of America. Another outrage, number eight. Americans, professional sports turning into a politicized circus. Ouch. And lastly, I mean, last night I'm reading from guys whose Facebook posts have been taken down. Uh, it happens all the time on our side. And it says, another outrage, last one. Big social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google, YouTube, with blithe censorship of content, including religious presentations, they find somehow dangerous to the accepted, i.e. their narrative. Meanwhile, genuine discussion about how to extend liberty and justice for all goes wanting. That's Rex's outrages. And you know what? Whether I'm outraged or not, I agree with him on all of these. Uh, and, and so I see something happen to our nation. And these things, I think you can find them under the authoritative leadership during this period of tribulation, especially the stifling of the freedom of religious expression. Now, how do I wrap this up? I, I, as I said, I try to stay out of politics. You may argue I was in politics knee deep today or up to my neck in politics, but it's important that we understand the, the times, uh, the signs of the times. And I have people in my church and, and friends in other churches that are very concerned about the mark of the beast. My goal was to shed some light from scripture on the mark of the beast. I am not telling you what to do. If you are asked to take that vaccination and you in your heart of hearts feel that this is wrong, that you are uh, capitulating to the mark of the beast, then don't do it. I'm not gonna tell you to do what against what God is saying. But what I am trying to do is shed some light. I think this is a harbinger of what may happen in the tribulation. But from what I can see, the, the true mark of the beast isn't instituted until halfway through the tribulation. And I gave you 11 things that have to happen that have not happened yet, including the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. The temple has to be built because he blasphemes God from the temple in Jerusalem. It isn't built. And so um, rest assured, there are some things that happen. And trust God on this. He's got it. God's got this. Proverbs says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's, you know, that's the first part. But the second part is, and lean not on your own understanding. I've learned that I can understand a lot of things, but there are a lot of things I don't understand. But God's got this. It's all leading up to an answer to the prayer that I believe you have been praying. When I look at the tribulation, it's followed by the glorious kingdom of Christ. He will return after the tribulation in power and great glory. And the armies of heaven, and he, he, he identifies the saints as being part of that. That's you and I from the church age. Return with him to establish his kingdom on earth. And you have been praying for that for, I don't, probably your whole life. It goes something like this. They call it the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
holy or hallowed be your name. And here's what you've been praying. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is all leading up to the kingdom of Jesus Christ being established on this earth. And we're going to go through some difficult times, but it is leading to the glorious kingdom. Thank you.